Are you ready to listen to a podcast? podcast. Here comes the Playhouse Podcast. Thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Find, subscribe, and listen. This is going to be the portion of the show where my PTSD of growing up not nearly as rich as Kat starts kicking in pretty hard. Don't be a victim. It's not cute. So uh, I had a friend that posted on Facebook what she bought her daughter, and it had me flashback. I'm like, oh, my God, that was like the coveted item. It was like one of those sample, the t- the 10 color retractable pens. So you just push down. If you didn't want yellow, you could move over to blue. And, and then you always tried to get up. them all to go at the same time, but like, physics wouldn't allow it. How did that? Yeah. <laughs> how did it? How, how can they do that? This thing is like something uh, made at NASA. Uh, and what else did I love? I love I love still to this day um, the mechanical pencils. I live for them. I feel like I write better if I have mechanical pencils. Don't gel want to waste pens, that lead. Gel pens. Those were massive. But the one item that I had for back to school, and I got it in fourth and fifth grade, and I felt super organized, but it was my Trapper Keeper from Lisa Frank. And then in the way back was a basketball hoop that you could erect and then it had like one of those flip things that you make your own little paper balls and then you bend it back and and you could play basketball the entire day at school, which I think is kind of irresponsible by Lisa Frank Inc. because it kept us distracted. But I just uh, I remember those fond memories. Of course, my 100 pack crayons. I know that that is a sore subject for you. But what was your favorite? Okay, we had money. What do you want me to do? It wasn't my fault that I grew up with everything I wanted. Okay? I feel like maybe I I would have rather had parents like yours. More practical. Kept me down to earth, you know? Every school supply (laughs) I had until I got into high school was stolen from our government. (laughs) Every one of them. Everything said Skillcraft U.S. government on it. I had number one lead pencils. Yeah. I did have, I'll give you this. Uh, I did, when my dad got moved to more of a, like a desk job with the with the military and the intelligence community, I did have the really, really, really good mechanical pencils. And here was the difference between mine and yours. If you bought your mechanical pencil at uh, Walmart, Target, wherever, uh, you had the .5 mm-hmm. lead Mine was like a .75. It was a thicker, more robust government lead. Yeah. So that if you did get stabbed with it, you were probably going to die. But <laughs> it lasted so much longer. Like I had I had military grade strength pencils yeah. when I was in elementary school. So <laughs> that's what made me so much smarter than everybody else. You were a bit more official than the average fifth grader. I would love for Paige to call in because I have no idea what that item is. But obviously it was coveted back to school. So I can't believe we're going to see those kiosks in literally 20 days. They're going to be less than I bet. I bet August 1st hits and boom, they're up. Ah, that hurts. It's like hearing Christmas music in October. (laughs) I I like that, though. It's just like that. I was trying to think about what was my favorite thing for school, though. Uh, I did have the really good mechanical pencils. Oh, you know what I had before everybody else had, though? Hmm. I had the metal protractor. Okay. Like everybody else had the cheap plastic ones. Yeah. I had metal ones. You could and, stab uh, somebody with yeah, that. That's about it, though. What was your favorite supply that you had for school? I'm going to stick with my Trapper Keeper just because it kept me entertained as well. So 251-1047. Hold on, you asked for, hey, Paige, uh, what, what, what did you text in, Paige? They're milk. Pens. Milky They're like pen. uh like gel. When I was in like fifth and sixth grade, they were super popular. Yeah. Um, and they were like gel pens, but you had to write on like black paper. Oh, I see it. Yep. Okay. So you where do you get black paper? Yeah. At Michaels. They were like pastel colors, and you had to write on dark paper. That's it. I you remember. rich spoiled brats are driving me crazy today. <laughs> Man. Yeah. They yeah. were super popular. Everyone had them. No, not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody. Yeah. Probably not everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Rich. I mean, Paige. So yeah, have a good day. Bye. bye. You know what I found at my mom's house? She has our keepsake box and a bunch of my little notes I used to send where you'd fold them all crazy and then you'd fold them in and then they'd make like a makeshift envelope and you'd send it to like, you know, check yes or no. Do you like me? Want to play spin the bottle on Friday? God, you are such a loose human being. <laughs> Just such not. a loose girl. Wow.
The best week of the year. It is Shark Week. Shark Week. Are those sharks with laser beams attached to their heads? <laughs> cool. Sharks are very scary. Angry sharks turn you on. You got this to the left. You know this about me, but I was in the ocean every single day in third grade. Every day. We'd leave school, we'd go home, we'd get our swimsuits on, we'd go down to the beach. When you're younger, you don't think about what could eat you, what could poison you, what Were could there ever kill any you, what could shark attacks you. or shark sightings? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. But they're like little ones, though, right? They're there not were, like... No, massive tiger sharks. There were um, probably great whites out out further. They get out a long way. It's so unlikely that you're ever going to encounter a shark. Tell that to the people on the East Coast. Are you serious? Are you reading the headlines or I watching am. news at all? They should have been standing there. They have had the most shark attacks this last Sighting. week and a half. Sighting. No, attacks. Great whites that are coming closer. One just washed up Yesterday, they said, could this be a sign that it's going to be one of the most massive oh, shark weeks ever? Stop it. Because it's all of publicity it. for shark weeks. I don't know when my fear started. Honestly, I think it was probably my honeymoon when Derek did that on the jet ski where we're going out there. I said, listen, this is fun. This is something you want to do. This excursion, I'll do it with you, but don't do anything crazy. Please don't do any tricks. He's like, sure, let's just go, let's cruise the ocean. And uh, he goes, hold on. And he tries to do this figure eight. I go flying. Our our $15 per goggles go flying. <laughs> Float away. I'm crying. That's what you're most mad about is he lost a $30 Contemplating deposit. Contemplating divorce because he's already not listening to what I want. To me, he's make- not doing <laughs> what I said. But all I, all I was thinking about is I'm treading water. I'm trying to get back to this jet ski that's floating away. And, um... Great white sightings have been happening more and more uh, every year here in Maui. That's all. That's all I was thinking about. And this is how I'm going to go. I'm going to be a headline. So no, you won't because they would put radio personality <laughs> dies. They wouldn't put your name or the radio station Whatever. you work at. They would just go radio personality dies from shark bite. I just have no uh, eagerness to go into the ocean anymore. I don't know why. Like, I'm not I love scared pools. of the sharks at all. You're I'm scared not? of the jellyfish. I, I, I yep. was never scared of anything till I saw that Will Smith movie. What is it? Seven pounds. Yeah. And at the end, when the that's the world's deadliest animal is whatever jellyfish he has kill him in that bathtub full of ice. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I ruined Just the movie. Ruined it. It's a it's an old movie. You probably weren't going to watch it all the way through anyways. But that's the one that I'm concerned with. Like, I'm not concerned with a oh, jellyfish bite. Somebody's got to pee on it. I'm concerned with the deli- jellyfish bite. That makes your whole nervous system shut down in a matter of seconds. And you will never know until it's too late. You will never know when you step on that sea urgent how much time you have. You might be allergic. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll run my risk with all of this except for the jellyfish. If there's a jellyfish sighting or they're anywhere and sometimes they put up the signs jellyfish are in the area. Mm-hmm. No, I won't even get on the sand that's the only thing I'm scared of. All right. Well, there you go. Maybe something that would make you avoid the ocean. Are you somebody that uh, just will not work the ocean into And listen, that's a okay because those life. sharks ain't coming into your pool. I don't know. There's just uh, there's nothing in me that's like, let's get to the beach. Radio paparazzi. Selena Gomez, she was doing this uh, live makeup tutorial of how she does her lips and she's in her bathroom and uh, her Nana is right there and uh, just lets everything out. So how did you end it with that guy? <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. Her eyes are like, oh, my God, Nana, not right now. All right, Sharon Osbourne weighing in on the royal family and uh, just um, had this to say about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. I think they're lost, and I think that they're trying to find their their place in the world. I think they're totally lost. Mm. You know, one minute they're making a cartoon, then they're doing a documentary on them. Now they're saving the world. They just haven't found their path in life life yet. I haven't from day one been into the fact of, you know, talking about private things, but they want more than just their freedom. They want to be two very important people politically. Um, I feel like they're probably pretty scared. Like when 
you feel like you have the rest of the path of your life mapped out like he did. And then you meet this woman who you love and you have a family with. And uh, then everything just goes crazy and haywire. I don't feel like they want anything to do with anything political. I think they just want to do their thing. Oh, yeah, they do. They you think so? They definitely do. I yeah. understand that they, they've got an agenda to try and do good things, but you think they want to be Maybe not politics? the president, uh, but definitely have influence with the White House as really? to how to change things, maybe for the better, especially climate control. All right, so Ariana Grande, she had it, and it's the start to Shark Week, which is one of my favorite weeks to watch on TV, not go experience myself. But uh, she said she loved sharks so much when she was two. No kids came. They came and left. I'm scared to watch Jaws now, I'm, let alone if I was two years old. <laughs> it's weird in there. It's weird in there. <laughs> so kids would come to your birthday party like, what's the and thing? Eat. Oh, you know, the sharks that eats people. Uh, yeah. My only birthday party, I had a, an NSYNC <laughs> birthday party. You did? Mm. Sick. It was a big party. What can yeah. I say? You're only 35 once. <laughs> I would love to have a themed out birthday party. I feel like that would be really fun. Like, I love the, and I can say this because I'm white, but like white trash themed. Like What's, where you put on a do? fake belly. Oh. And then you got your uh, tank top all scrunched up up here. You're not drinking because you're pregnant, but like you're like fake. Anyway, maybe I'll read How many of these that. parties have you been to? None. Oh. That's what I'm saying. I want to have a fun themed birthday. Maybe that will be my plan for my next birthday. Who knows? You're not invited. You're only 50 once. There you go. Uh, blowing up the candles today. Matt LeBlanc is 55 and Iman, the beautiful supermodel, is 67. All right. St. Cloud City Hall, the building coming down today right there at Division and 4th Avenue South. So it's been there for like 98 years. It used to be uh, the high school. And then obviously renovated to City Hall. But now City Hall has moved to the Old Tech High School over in the Lake George neighborhood. So if you're wondering what the commotion is. What's it going to be? Do we know what's going to go in that spot now? No idea. I hope it's a parking lot. I hope it's a Benihana. Oh, oh. <laughs> good call. <laughs> or like a huge Osaka or it's like a cool restaurant. We need one, another one downtown. We have so many cool restaurants, but let's add another. All right. Law enforcement says, and forgive me if I got this wrong, because I don't belong to this video sharing platform like, like with two E's at the end. Uh, it's similar to TikTok. Okay. And uh, it's a video sharing platform with very few controls. So Benton County Sheriff Troy Heck is saying that the app is uh, supposed to only let users of 16 years or older use it, but I mean, there are so many ways to get around those restrictions. Well, they so, just ask you what year you were born. You can lie about that, right? right? Uh, parental, parental, parental uh, filtering uh, functions are being criticized because they're very ineffective. So watchdog groups have done the research. They say that uh, this is a very easy way for older people to get in t- uh, contact with younger people like your teens or tweens. So make sure that you have a conversation with them uh, if they have the Internet or smartphone access. And uh, just say, listen, you got to be smart about the usage. Debbie won the lottery. Oh, yeah. She hit the Mega Millions jackpot. You win the lottery. Hey. You just won the lottery. Mega Millions jackpot. That is one lottery I'd like to see. There you go. And good luck. Thank you. So I truly can't talk lotto with Liam ever again because he hasn't spent on our way to go get the ticket. And he'll ask me just outlandish things oh, like, that's fun. where would we go on vacation? And then I tell him and then he goes, well, that's not good enough. You got to tell me a different answer. <laughs> and, and So no one won Friday. It's just want to let you know, Tuesday, it's going to be at 790 million. So your lump the- sum is over 400 million. This is the biggest Mega Millions ever been, right? No, isn't it like the second biggest? Oh, okay. Because the last one was the third biggest. So I think um, we got a uh, couple hundred million more to go. So what's the take go. home again? Over 400 million. So I We know. call that never see JJ again money. Yep. Head to the gas station, get that. Good news too, by the way, the average price of the gallon of gas has dropped by 32 cents, even though it's still a dollar thirty two higher than it was a year ago. We're still going in the right direction, which is down. Uh, and by the way, I-, I was never a big fan of like being a, what do you want to call it? Like a VIP member at gas stations and stuff like that. Yeah. But when you roll up to the pump and you hit your credit card and you like, you had gotten so many points and they're like, can we give you an extra 10, 10 cent uh, a gallon? <laughs> gallon? Yes, you can. Thank yes. you very much. All of a sudden it gets down to under four bucks and you're like, yeah, buddy. It's a good feeling. I know that uh, off Clearwater Road, it's like 328 or something like Wait, that. Wait, so th- it's 328 where? At the stop and go? I told you. Off, is it Clearwater Road or Roosevelt? One of the two. Right here. 
like you're going towards campus. Yeah. You just take that. Like that little that one, that care. little one right by Lake yes. George there? No, no, up further. Oh. So just keep going until you see the sign and then you'll be pleasantly surprised. Ah, do you wonder up. sometimes why some gas prices are lower than the others? Maybe they're just cooler. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Time for your daily dose of cuteness. This is Landon Dickerson and he's kind of a star on social media. I see his cute little TikToks. He's three and he's precious and he knows And it. I'm so precious <laughs> and I'm so really happy and super happy. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. You're glad I'm happy? Well, Daddy is happy. (laughs) And are you happy, too? I'm so happy. Okay. (laughs) All three of you? (laughs) All three of them are happy and precious. That is so cute. Just a quick story of what happened. Went with uh, another couple and their son to the Rocks game and had a great time. Uh, this couple is really cool, but they're totally different from Derek and myself. How they're so? Very, they're very, they go to church. <laughs> okay, um, so they're good people. Yeah, they say stuff like, oh my goodness and stuff. Oh. And so, oh my God, I was climbing up in my chair and my arm slipped and I said the JC. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dear. and they looked at me like, you know. They wanted to spray you with holy water? Like Beelzebub sent me to the baseball game. Oh, you broke a commandment. But they're really cool. They're they're chill, and uh, they watch the same movies that we do. We were, like, quoting the other guys, which you can't not. And then uh, I said, uh, oh, she was talking about, oh, yeah, I'm a bad parent. I was letting my kid watch The Office the other day. And I'm like, God, if you're a bad parent, then I'm, like, a really, really, really bad parent. Yeah, that's pretty... Uh... <laughs> But I guess they said something and uh, her daughter was like, what's that? And she was like, I could hardly explain it to her. (laughs) And then I said, oh, my God, I had kind of a moment with Liam the other day when we were watching the new Lampoon's Vacation. Oh, with Ed Holmes? Rusty is (laughs) by the hot tub. And uh, there's a term that they're using. And uh, Liam's like, what's that? (laughs) And I go, well. And you told him? I just told him. You told him. your 10-year-old what that term meant? I just told him wow. because because I didn't want him, like, saying it, you know, and not knowing what it was. And I just said, this is like a house conversation. Wow. You can never, you can never, but I love his reaction. He was like, oh, my God, who would ever do that? I said, weirdos do that stuff. Weirdos do that. Wait till he sees your OnlyFans. So, so the guy that we were with was like, wow. did this with his eyebrows. And uh, I said, do you not know what that is? And then he said, well, is it? And he said it and he got it wrong. And I said, no. Was it What he it's, said, was it worse than what it is? No. It's, okay. uh, it's not even close to what it he is. He was like, is it sleeping without a blanket? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, it's a, uh, and I whispered it. Like, I'm more so mouthed wow. like this. Oh, and so you told them about when you have to get your tire changed. <laughs> and what that, yep, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And wow. he and his wife literally were like, who would do that? They asked the question that a 10 year old would ask, who would do that? And I said, you guys need me. You need people like me in your life so you don't walk around as they're in their 40s <sighs> not knowing what that was. I knew what that was in high school. I will. I, uh, by the way, I understand that if you're a good human being, this might all seem a little foreign right now. But I would like to do a small socio poll. Yeah, it's almost an experiment here. If you think you know what we're talking about, we will keep you completely anonymous. But I want you to text in what you think the term "cat" told her child was. I didn't. I and had to explain her it. Friends with he asked me straight out and I'm not going to not tell him because I just said listen it's pretty terrible and just know I don't know this because of Are you of telling experience. me Kat that no matter how much you love your husband this will never be part of the repertoire? Have you heard stories about my husband and what happens almost on a daily? So the answer is no. What? Okay so let's say he took a bath in bleach. You wouldn't even entertain the thought. I uh, could not. <laughs> I could not. Uh, so two words. First word. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <sighs> we have now realized that Kat has sunk into a no, uh, new depth in her parenting life. And she has told her son what uh, 
I, what most of us didn't know until we were probably in our 20s or 30s. I know. It wasn't a proud moment. I didn't realize that I had done something terrible until I explained what it was to a couple that uh, were trying to get to know. God, yeah, making were. friends as like adults is really weird. Well, it's when you bring up to... <laughs> adult terms like this, people are going to judge you. If this is like one of your first hangouts with this couple and this is what you decide should be the topic of interest. This couple is like just they got a one way ticket to the pearly gates like they're holy people and they're great parents. And this is what you decided to talk about. I would consider myself a great parent. Just sometimes, you know, you're watching something and something comes up and then your child asks you what it is. We were watching uh, the vacation movie with the new one with Ed Helms, and he's rusty, and his son, there's a term where he's at the hot tub, and Liam goes, what is that? And I explained it to him because I didn't want him to go say it like on on Fortnite Live or whatever. He's already saying it on Fortnite Live. And he goes, why would people do that? And then this this the couple who are in their 40s had no idea what it was. So I had to educate them and, as well. You know what this is, right? Good morning. So I'm driving and I can't text, but it's a <laughs> right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Now, did you know what that was when you were 10 like Cat's son? Not when I was 10, but I definitely knew it in high school. Can you believe these like 40-somethings? Had, they looked at me like, like I do it every day. And I'm like, I tried to explain. I didn't, I don't know it because I do it. I knew it from a long time ago, but would you ever do it? But the crazy part is I, I, I'm the weirdo that would. You're a weirdo that would do that? <laughs> I, I would and I have. <laughs> Stop! Oh my God. I'm clean. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Weird stuff. Everybody called me weird. I am weird. You don't think this is a little weird? No. I don't think it's weird at all. Weird news. All right. So, you know those um, photo compilations where it's like, you only had one job, Mm -hmm. and then they put the door above the toilet, stuff (laughs) like that. There's a town in California dealing with an incorrectly painted street line, uh, and it's like zigzagged. There's no way that you could even zig or zag and get where you have to go, so people are just going straight. I saw it later in the afternoon on my way home from work, and I thought... Whoa, this is the strangest thing I've seen. <laughs> and basically, it just comes down to the contractor. Uh, somebody didn't read the plans correctly. Uh, it was not designed to look like that. I love it. My favorite is when you see somebody misspell the word like street. Yeah. Or like, you know, they got to paint the words on the street, like stop ahead. Yeah. And they misspell stop or something like that. Like, ahead. are my favorites. So they say it was a miscommunication between the city and construction crews. I would think looking at the plans and going, I don't know. I don't know if they really want us to do that. Maybe let's send a, a quick text and see what that's all about. And that is what's weird. Some people have uh, very eventful deliveries, which is not something you want. When you get pregnant, you're like, this is my plan. This is my doctor. She or he will be available whenever my water breaks. And then, uh, surprise, nothing goes your way. Or maybe it was just perfect. But uh, we want to talk about the imperfect deliveries where maybe he just, he missed it by a hair. You almost did. We'll get to your story. But uh, this delivery nurse, she is outing uh, a couple of men's excuses for almost missing the birth. Number one, he went to go get food. I had a patient. I thought she was going to go fast. And I told him I had a feeling. But he insisted that he did not like hospital food. And he went to get fast food. Missed the birth of a child. No. Number two, his phone was on silent. His wife was gracious enough to let him stay home while she labored a little bit. But he wanted to get a good nap in so he put his phone on silent oh. don't ever believe oh. that uh you know we still have a few hours don't ever don't leave because you never know it, it is just a crazy uh turn of human events but what was your what was yours you you went downstairs for some food well that was my daughter right so our second child i almost missed because i was in the uh in the cafeteria yeah but then our first also uh my wife goes into labor and they get the Pitocin running, and they tell me, oh, it's probably going to be a few hours yet. And my mom and dad had just gotten there. They drove, I don't know, three hours to get to the hospital. And my dad goes, you need some food. It's going to be a long day. So about a block away from the hospital is this, like, 
shady bar and grill, like one that doesn't have any windows. Yeah. So you don't really know that it's even daylight out there. Was it a strip club? No, 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 no. It was oh. just a regular, like a, like a, I think it's a bar mostly, but they serve food. Okay. And so we're sitting there and we each order like a cheeseburger and a beer, right? We're just kind of sitting there. I'm like, oh, and he was like, I can't believe you're going to be a father. Like he had this proud dad thing going on. Yeah. And I took one bite of my cheeseburger and my phone started ringing. And it was Trish. She goes, you better get here now. Mad sprint. So I I, uh, I go, Dad, I got to go. And he goes, okay, no problem. And I threw a $20 bill on the table expecting him to go, hey, I got it. It's a great day for you. You're going to become a father today. I'll yeah. pick it up. He goes, all right, thanks. And oh. he took it. Now, on the other hand, we go through the rest of the time, and I get back to the hospital in plenty of time. My dad even finished at least one, I'm guessing, three or four beers. Yeah. And <laughs> all of our food. And he comes back to the hospital. I go, hey, where's the food? Because the baby still hadn't come yet. I go, hey, where, where's the rest of my food? Oh, I, I didn't think you wanted that. He gladly ate my cheeseburger and oh, fries, sure. pounded my beer, and probably hung around for a couple more shots and uh, showed up with no food at the hospital. I was back in plenty of time. So what was the eventful happening, whether it was in the ER, you were delivering C-section, uh, you're pushing that baby out, what happened? Listen to this audio. This is this uh, dad caught on tape gagging throughout the whole thing. <gasps> yes. Oh. oh, he's gagging. Yep. And I'm uh, telling you, by the way, fellas, there's some stuff you're going to see for the first time that you can't unsee. Don't look past the knees if you don't want that. Focus on the eyes. You should have, yeah, right. Stay up by her face. Yep. Link your arm under her leg and just stare into her just eyes. Just trust the doctor. Encourage, it's all going to be all right. Don't look down there because, yeah, stuff rips. Well, hey, and enough stuff oozes oh, yeah. and okay. baby heads and anyway. So what went down during your delivery that is so notable? You have to tell people the reasons guys are missing the birth of their children. Number one, he went to go get food. I had a patient. I thought she was going to go fast and I told him I had a feeling, but he insisted that he did not like hospital food and he went to get fast food. Missed the birth of his child. Number two, his phone was on silent. His wife was gracious enough to let him stay home while she labored a little bit, but he wanted to get a good nap in, so he put his phone on silent. <sighs> wow. How do you even live that down? Dad, why weren't you there? Because I wanted some wings. I needed a nap. Yeah. I don't want to believe the nurse. What does she know? I get that it might be your last nap for a few years. Yeah. But you still got to you gotta show up, right? I know. I had to have a conversation with my little brother. So they had my niece, Ophelia, and um, he went and took like a four or five hour nap after that. <laughs> and uh, well, the baby was in the nursery? Yeah. Well, so but like, I don't care about that. That's fine. But... I mean, the, the woman that just pushed the baby out. Was she napping too? No. Oh. She didn't she have that luxury. Up she watching Friends on reruns? Pumping. Oh, yeah, that's what you do. She was <laughs> relaxed. She was pumping. She was nervous. She was just going through it. And he's just like snoring away. So he didn't after that, though. Ashley, you got a story for us? Uh, somebody missed the birth. Maybe it was an odd birth. What happened? Um. Yeah, it was odd. But um, my son was born on Halloween. Ooh, and my daughter was born on October 30th. Cool. So I almost had them on the same day. What happens nine months like before a, that that you guys are in a routine? For what? What happens nine months before that that you guys are in such a routine? Is that Valentine's Day? Valentine's oh, day? it's Valentine's oh, Day. My God. That's it. Yeah. All right. So that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. All right. So, so we don't celebrate it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That month is Don't Touch Me Month. Yep. So, okay. so at, you had a three-month-old, and you worked in the sex. Wow, good for you! No, 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 no! They're two years apart. Oh, oh they are. Okay. Cat thought you were yeah. a superhero Wait, there for a second. You had a two-year-old, no, and you worked <laughs> in. <laughs> I have a ten-year-old, and I don't work in it. But that's all right. TMI. Me and my fiance have a very good relationship. We make time for each other, even though we have kids. Yeah, I should probably do that. <laughs> All right, this is all getting pretty morbid. Uh, <laughs> Ashley, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Uh, now, I saw this text, and I thought you guys need to hear about it straight from April. April, who missed the birth of your child? The doctor. Mm. No. <laughs> Tell see, us. same thing happened to me. Did they think that you were going to go, like, they had some days left, so they had to take vacation? No. 
No, I was actually, I had an induction for my baby. Um, so I was in labor, but um, the doctor had checked me and he said that I was only eight centimeters. Well, as soon as the doctor had checked me and left the room, I started feeling like I just had to push. Yeah. And um, so I was telling the staff that was there, something's wrong, like I need to push. And they were like, no, no, it's too soon. And so the doctor um, had left to attend, you know, to check on his other patients or whatnot. Um, My husband almost missed it because he had went to get a bite to eat, (laughs) but they got him back when I was having some distress. And um, uh, my my husband had come back in the room and it was just the nurse in there and my husband. And I felt that I felt like I the head was coming out and I said I think I feel her head yeah and the nurse looked under the covers and sure enough and then my husband tells the way my husband tells it he's like yeah I heard a cry and then I realized wait a minute and he pulled back the sheet and there was my daughter and when the doctor came back to the room he like poked his head back in and he goes so what's going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, I had the baby, man. Yeah. <laughs> and everything was turned out okay, even though you had your baby in your bed. Yeah, she was fine. Oh, yep. right, good. And uh, wow. Did, were you one of those women that had that birth plan where if it went awry, you were just like freaking out? Or were you just go with the flow, get this thing out? I will tell you that when I first had that overwhelming el- urge to push, it was very scary yeah. because it was my first um, child and I didn't know how overwhelming that feeling was going to be. And I was worried that I was going to hurt her or myself by pushing when they told me not to. But like then my, I think my instincts just kicked in and I kind of said to myself like, nope. Your body knows what it's yeah, doing, uh, and then I kind of relax, for... and she was born. Yeah. Do you wonder where the doctor was and how they couldn't get a hold of him to get back down to your room that quick, and there's not like a backup plan for any of this? He was playing Candy that's, Crush on the toilet. That's, that's exactly, they... that's, that was my first thought, was this guy was taking a dump. Yeah, he's like, quit bothering me with the these doc- Well, he was just convinced that there was no way that I was ready to push yet, Yeah. because Such all of this happened doctor. within a 15-minute span. Right. Well, you're superhuman, so April. Glad everything worked out. I feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great morning. <laughs> Trending today. We're going to stick with school because there is a high school. It's called Green Hill High School in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. But they're not going to be offering physics. Who cares? Physics are Whoa, nobody needs physics. But yes. it's because they can't find one teacher <laughs> anywhere in the country to come and teach at that high school. Uh, so they're going to be offering a different kind of so class. So hold on. Let me place. understand. In Mount what? Mount Juliet, Tennessee. In Mount Juliet, Tennessee, they can't find none one physics teacher. You feel like anybody in Tennessee Listen, needs this physics. this has got to be a mountain town. I didn't even look it up, but I'm assuming that most kids are wearing overalls at this school. I love conversations like this with this question is, what class should replace it? What class should be offered to kids in, let's stick with high school. Um, I always think money management courses are such a big deal. Those are like opt-in classes, like an elect class that you can choose. I feel like it should be mandatory. How many adults are walking around out there that have nothing planned for retirement, Nothing in their savings, living paycheck to paycheck. And right now it's kind of like the victim of circumstance. But like what class, uh, what class should be offered? To Home improvement class. Like uh, t- like you get to decide as the semester what room you're going to fix up in this mock house. Okay. And then they teach you if you've got to tear down the wall, how you can move the electrical or how you have to put sheetrock up or you patch sheetrock or you put in uh, hardwood floors or yep. you adjust the door that doesn't completely shut, stuff like that. Learn like, what load-bearing walls yes, are. Yes, right. And uh, why you Emma? can't knock those down <laughs> anytime you want. She's talking to my brother who knows everything about everything, right? And my older brother, Casey, and she's like... So I'm going to take down this wall and then this wall. And he goes, well, then your house won't be here <laughs> because it will collapse in on itself. So thank God he was there. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Everybody. I tried to have advice for my uh, cousin Crystal at the wedding I was just at because she was telling me about how she borrowed her coworker money to go to a Botox party, which... I've gone to them. Uh, They're only scary for a minute. And then she borrowed her like a hundred and... Do you booze at these parties too? 
You do have wine. Yeah. yeah. It's y'all loose. Sounds, like a, sounds like a bad idea, man. The nurse man. doesn't drink. She comes in. She's got her gloves on. She's all so set this up. This is like a, a hired nurse to come in after you have a bottle of wine to shoot you up with Botox. This is somebody that administers Botox for a living and then hosts these private parties. It is not unheard of. It happens all the time. But she borrowed her, like, I don't know how much it was, like between 130 and 150, something like that. And uh, that was a month ago. And she said she does not even acknowledge it. And I'm like, you just got to maybe just straight up ask. I know it's got to be uncomfortable, but have you ever owed money or borrowed money to somebody at work? Melissa, this is hitting kind of close to home. You uh, lent money to someone? Yeah, it was a coworker of mine. I lent her 300 bucks for her kid's daycare. Oh, man. Four months ago. Yeah. She knew it wasn't a gift. She knew she had to pay it back, but she hasn't even mentioned it. You know, like, hey, I just need a little more time. Like, nothing like that at all. So it's like... That's almost worse when they don't acknowledge it. So here's what I don't get is like I get like, hey, you don't want to ask somebody back for their money. But if you're at a point where you're asking somebody to borrow money, then I think you should understand that people are going to want their money. Right back as well within a like you know reasonable time frame yeah i would think so but i don't know how to even bring this up now like i don't want work to be awkward it's, i mean i know she made it awkward but like yeah uh, what you know is there a plan to yeah. pay me back at least you know? I, I don't know i don't think that there's any harm in asking just saying you know like i know you were on hard times when i borrowed you that money you know how are things going can you start paying me back you know maybe 50 bucks here 50 bucks there and that'll add up to the 300 so, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you try that. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could just steal a bunch of to. stuff from her. No, don't do that. <laughs> I don't think so. Who thinks so? I like, hey, that's 20 bucks a week. I'm gonna. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep your laptop mouse. And then. <laughs> the lateral. Yeah. Right. And uh, you've just paid me back 20 bucks a week. I'm going to put you on layaway. Like they used to at Kmart. Yeah. And then when you get close to being paid back, I'll let you have your mouse back, but you're still going to owe me the others. And I'm going to put you on uh, three-point interest. So Liz texted, I hate confrontation. I would probably tell her I'm setting my August budget and wanting to know if I can expect the full $140 in one payment or if she would like to make payments. Um, Obviously, she is uh, hard up for money. And uh, I would say, listen, installments are totally cool. Or equate it like, hey, buy me lunch every day for this many days. And then you don't have to worry about lunch. I want the money instead. That's why I like Venmo so much. I don't even think about the money coming in or out. (laughs) Were the following acts committed by drunk adults or stupid little kids? Some days I do so well. Uh, hopefully that is today. Uh, your batting average at this game is probably close to three to four hundred, correct? Which gets you in the Hall of Fame if you're playing baseball. But for almost everything else in life, you're below average. Okay. So here's what happens: you let us know what happened. We're gonna try and figure out did it happen while you were a drunk adult having a good time. Or just a dopey little kid. And Carrie, I want you to get a started because I know it has to do with Catwoman. So what happened? I threw up in my Catwoman suit in front of a huge group of people. Uh, okay, so she threw up in her Catwoman suit. Could be a child's Halloween costume. Maybe too much candy. I'm going to go little kid with this one. Carrie, drunk adult or little kid? I was a little kid. Yes. I was in a Halloween costume contest at my elementary school. I was super sick. I didn't want to miss, you know, the big day. Sure. Halfway through the contest, I puked all over my costume. Gross. It was in front of the entire third grade. Did you right. ever puke in front of everybody? I remember when Melanie Dupree got up in kindergarten. Yeah. She hit my shoe with her vomit. She couldn't get out of the back oh. row of the... She couldn't get... I was in, like, the second row, probably, maybe yeah. four rows deep. And she got up, and she goes, I have to throw up. And Mrs. Lane looked at her, and as she was running out the door, it was a projectile. Oh, girl. And she barely oh. got up from her desk, and I remember it hit my shoe. And I didn't give any concerns to that poor girl whatsoever. I just knew that there was vomit on my shoe. Yeah. And remember the paper towels you have in your first or kid in kindergarten raid room? They don't absorb <laughs> they're anything. They're just like cardboard. They just move it around. You know that's so weird when somebody barfs in school, you remember their first and last name and you always use it when you tell it like Eric Platten. It was <laughs> spaghetti day and I mean all over. It was math class and I just remember two back from me and the smell wouldn't go away. Sorry Eric. 
We're putting everyone on blast this okay. morning, aren't we? Uh, Troy, you get the next one. Drunk adult, little kid. Tell us what happened, please. I burned my LeBron James jersey when he left Miami to go back to Cleveland. All right. That's uh, a drunk adult thing. You think you? so? I think yes. so, too. Drunk adult or little kid here, Troy? I was a little kid, man. Oh. I was just so hurt when he left. And I, I'd seen someone else on TV burn their jersey, you know. And so yeah. I tried it in my kitchen and almost burned the house down. <laughs> <laughs> my mom refused to ever buy me anything with the heat on. Good. Again. The heavy irony is that it was burning a heat jersey. Yeah. Here. Now, uh, before we get into our next round, if you want to throw one at us real quick, I'd be open to taking one or two more. This is Drunk Adult or Little Kid. You give us the scenario. Cat struggles to figure out whether you were drunk and an adult or just a dumb little kid and you didn't know any better. Now, uh, Ashley's scenario I know has to do with a Britney Spears show. So tell us what happened first. Then we're going to try and figure it out, Ashley. I lost $1,000 in cash at a Britney Spears concert. Okay. Now, Logic would say... I would say little kid because when you lose that much cash as a kid, it's like losing your... What your... little kid has $1,000? She said $50. Didn't she? She said $1,000. At a Britney Spears concert. Why would she have $1,000 at a Britney... All right. Um, then if it's $1,000, I would say Gotta be a Vegas adult. performance, right? Yeah. Drunk adults are little kid here, Ashley. I was a little kid. Oh I was God. at a Britney Spears concert with my mom, and she asked me to hold her purse while she went to the bathroom. Oh, no. Ended up getting distracted, and I left my mom's purse on a table out front of the arena, and someone took the purse, which unfortunately had over $1,000 Oh, my God. Look at that. All right. How do you not just leave your kid there? That took an about face. Didn't see that one. Oh, that was gross. Yeah, that was horrible. My heart's pounding a little bit harder just knowing that a kid could lose $1,000. All right, uh, time for one more. And I wanted to save what I'm guessing is going to be our best for last. Wait till you hear what Misty did. Go ahead, tell everybody. I crapped in a hat while driving on a road trip. <laughs> um. Wow. Uh, given that I have many uh, issues, I could see how that could happen to an adult. I'm going to say an adult. You just uh, You don't think this was mom it. or dad handing a hat back to a kid and your dad's going, "We're not stopping." What one didn't you do that with one of your kids with a baseball hat? Oh, no, like, he puked? Oh. This yeah. is you guys, this was my, uh, before we get to I'll tell you the story. First real quick, Misty, drunk adults are a little kid when you crapped in the hat. I was a drunk adult. Yes. <laughs> my friends and I were heading to the Keys. Um, I ate some sausage for breakfast, and it didn't really agree with me. And I also had a few white Russians, which was really not a good choice. And then <laughs> once we hit the seven-mile bridge, I got a case oh. of bubble guts. And <laughs> long story short, I could not hold it. And I ended up crapping in my hat because our driver would not pull over. Oh, my God. What a rude guy. I bet he'll never, ever do that again. Oh, you have to poop? I will pull over for you. There's nowhere to go on the Seven Mile Bridge. You just gotta, you just gotta do it. Put your hazards on and stop. <sighs> but we'll go around you. Just you. Over the edge? <laughs> just a plop <laughs> plop it. at 65 feet? Pooping in the street. So my wife, uh, being the bougie, keeping up with the Joneses girl she is, uh, had a BMW X5. Yeah. That's like the, uh, the crossover vehicle. And uh, the strict rule when she purchased this was there will be no food. No drink other than water in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, our kids, when we get done with like a baseball tournament, they'd have to fully strip in the parking lot. And then all their clothes would have to go in a garbage bag. And then the garbage bag would have to be sealed to go in the back end. So we're coming back. uh, This is one late July day. And one of these uh, tournaments where it was Sunday and we were playing in the championship game. So it meant we played like six games over the weekend. And my oldest son... Must have been like 12 or 13 at the time. And uh, we think it's a great idea to just run through McDonald's drive through on the way home because he's just so hungry. He's been playing all day. Yeah. And we're maybe 10 minutes out. And he had pounded down like two hamburger or two cheeseburgers and like 20 nuggets. He was oh. so hungry. And then must have washed it down with like a, you know, big Sprite or something like that. Yeah. 
And he goes, Mom, I'm going to, Mom, oh, I don't no. feel good. And she goes, don't do you not puke <laughs> in my BMW. And he's like, you got to pull over. She goes, it's all gravel over here. I can't, I'm not going to pull over on a gravel side of the road. Yeah. And, uh, and like, there wasn't a paved, uh, you know, shoulder. And she made him throw up in his baseball hat. <laughs> and then I had to put my hat under his hat because yeah. if you know the hats, they all have these little breathe holes on the top. Yep. And she was afraid that that would soak through and go through. So he had to throw up in his baseball hat. God. And it was full, guys. Resource. It was a full barf hat. Yuck. Kid barf in the car is oh, like next level. And it had that, that acidic yeah. smell. And then I don't know the exact chemical composition of how a chicken nugget changes when it starts getting digested. I found out that. No, 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 no I think it happens really fast. fast it was a puree. Uh-huh. But I'm finding out. That at the wedding, Mm -hmm. Kat's new sister-in-law got wasty pants and told Kat's aunt Nora that we do a bit about her on the radio. Loose lips. What the hell is that all about? Wedding receptions. I mean, so she was like taking shots with her friends and everyone's having a good time. It's fine and and great. Celebrate life. Yeah, I walk up and uh, my cousin goes, hey, uh, Ashley just said that. You do a bit about my mom on the air. And I go, what are you talking about? So I walk up <laughs> but to you Ashley. You're such a bad liar in that situation. I'm like, a bad liar? When you, when you get, like, if you have a chance to prepare your lie, <laughs> you're one of the best. I don't know really too many people that are better liars Thank than you. you. Thank but you. But when you get caught off guard, you go, you your voice goes up. Your one eyebrow goes not. up. You get Sharpay <laughs> forehead. And you go, we do a bit about Aunt Nora? No. no. So I walk up to Ashley. I go, what the hell? And she goes, oh, it's fine. <laughs> and she's just like, just glossy eyed. And I said, well, what did you say to her? Did you say that like we make fun of her? And she goes, no, we just, I just said, hey, uh, Kat does a bit about you on the radio. You got to check it out because it's all the stuff you post on Facebook. So why would I read something yes. about her if I'm not making fun of it a little bit? But I do read it verbatim, so it's not like I give my opinion or anything like that. So I'm not like quite, I'm not quite there making fun of her. But then we're still my gonna cousin, be able to do the bit, though, right? Oh yeah, we'll okay. still do it. Um, she'll probably post about it, and then we can <laughs> read about it today. But my cousin, her daughter, was like, "Oh my god, I have been wanting to do a podcast with the stuff that that woman puts on social media." I said, "So there is something to it. There's material there. There is material. It's good stuff. This is this is why." Our society is degrading at an enormous rate. Oh, good. Start to a Monday. We have an air hockey table in our basement. Mm -hmm. And we've had it for, I don't know, seven, eight years. The kids got a lot of fun out of it. They'd have friends over and stuff like that. And I asked my son who moved into like his first like college house. Like it's like animal house. It looks, it's exactly like that. I said, you guys want this? He goes, no, I don't think anybody use it. I said, fine, let's get it out of our basement. It doesn't seem to get used anymore. So I just threw it up on Facebook marketplace for free. Yeah. What a freaking clown show it is to give something away. So many questions. Oh my God. Yeah. Ah, can you bring it? No, no, no. You got to come get it. Number one, I could take the legs off it, but I don't need to. If you just have a pickup truck, we throw it in the back and off you go. I got the pucks. I got the paddles. It works. It's not perfect, but it works. If you got little kids, they'll love it. 25 different people. Can you bring it here? No, you got to pick it up. Yeah. Oh, can I pick it up on Wednesday? No, you got to pick it up today or tomorrow. Like it just, it's got either I throw it in the fire pit or you come get it. Oh, my husband doesn't get off work till six. Can he pick it up then? I I don't care. He can swing by. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on the curb. Mm-hmm. And all y'all come by. And if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. And then finally, one lucky, uh, one nice lady said, oh, we're on our way. We're going to pick it up. And they grabbed it. And it was, go- I'm telling you, to try and sell or give away something on Facebook Marketplace is a chore. This is why people are just like, I'll just throw it away. I don't know if you're bringing this up because the universe wants me to foreshadow that this is going to be drama, but I have like nine items that I would love to put on my cat page. Don't. I'm telling you, just but, give them away. You walk down the street and give them to someone. I know. Just well, find the someone. The thing is, I posted on our, our um, development Facebook page and I said, who wants to shop? And I put everything on there and I said, you let me know. DM me and then you just come to my house and give me the money and I will give you the goods 
I wanted to do it that way so I didn't have to say, I'll meet you here, I'll meet you there. That's what I'm nervous and about. And this, this lady was nice. She said, thank you. She said, uh, for sure, we'll pay it forward. And I'm like, that's great. That's what the karma I wanted to put out in the universe. Yeah. But man, trying to give something away for free <laughs> is unbelievably difficult in today's know, age. Girl. Do better, people. Probably a loser in saying this wrong, but um, it's like L-I-K-E-E. It's the new video sharing platform, and law enforcement wants parents to be hip to this. So it's kind of like TikTok, but very few controls. And when it comes to uh, parental uh, functions and filtering functions, they're being criticized as ineffective. So uh, Benton County Sheriff Troy Heck is saying uh, it's supposed to let users of 16 years or older use it, but they're finding so many younger kids are going to this platform uh, because their parents don't know about it. So you have all these older people in their 30s, 40s, maybe up to no good, having instant access to your kids. So talk to them about it. Make sure that they're staying safe while using the internet and smartphone devices. Uh, who, the world Health Organization talking about monkeypox and the outbreak. I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. It's therefore essential that all countries work closely to design and deliver effective information and services and to adapt measures that protect the health, human rights, and dignity of affected communities. Stigma and discrimination can be as dangerous as any virus. Do you remember when people started getting coronavirus and we literally treated them like second class citizens and then you got it. I don't like that. I do. I remember people being just like I don't know ridiculed or treated like just trash if they got it. That was early on. It was like why are you exposing yourself? I can't believe you have it. You know like don't come near me which is a valid thought. I keeping my distance a lot more. Right. You know what I mean? Like even on I remember my wife and I going for walks and we'd see people in our neighborhood and we'd cross the street so that we wouldn't pass them on the sidewalk. Yes, you know what I mean? I remember, I remember that. that. And I, I don't feel like I'd treat anybody differently. I was just like, I don't want to get sick. There were sev- uh, several people treating other people differently. So please, yes, t- treat people like humans. They are. All right, National today. Wine and Cheese Day. Today is the day to celebrate that. Is there anything better than wine and cheese? Wine and wine. Wine is what there you go. That's true. I love cheese. I love wine. It's showtime, baby. I'm still waiting for my red wine palette to kick in. Your wife's like, yeah, when you get to have four day, you're going to love red wine. And I, she's doesn't, she doesn't drink red wine. At, like outside of communion, yeah. that girl won't drink what red wine unless it's like what the last poser. thing at the party. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She's a Pinot gal, rosé all day. So, but either way, whatever wine you choose, pair it with a delicious cheese and enjoy today. So, uh, you know, I can't believe it's almost August. It seems like this month is just July. Isn't that weird? (laughs) But there's a heat wave happening on the East Coast. Last night was so delicious. It was so amazing. Yesterday's weather, uh, a record breaking heat wave sweeping across the Northeast, though, and um, extreme temps expected today through tomorrow. News anchors just can't believe it. As hip hop sensation Nelly once said, it's hot in, so hot in here. But just how hot is it, Elizabeth? It is so hot outside. Carson, how hot is it? It's so hot. I bought a loaf of bread chase before I got home. It was toast. It is so hot. I saw a dog chasing a cat and they were both walking. It's so hot yesterday. I saw the devil sitting by the AC. How hot is it? Uh, I almost called my ex-girlfriend just so I could be around something shady. <laughs> Off we go with the Monday show. Welcome to our little spot on the radio. Cat, how was your weekend? Give me give me some I details am. about this amazing wedding I heard so much about. It was so lovely. I'm telling you, they could not have had better weather. The wedding was so intimate. My brother got married and um, my niece is just, <laughs> she's I such did a roly poly. I picture and, of that little cheese ball oh in, my the, God. Uh, in the white dress and she looked like she got after some chocolate. Is that what was going on there? No, those were beans. Oh. So they had Braza cater and it was delicious. Um, who knew gluten-free could taste so good? So the bride's gluten-free. Uh, got her the cake from Mixing It Up Gluten-Free Bakery. It was delicious. And uh, the weather was gorgeous. And um, the ceremony was so intimate. And it was it was a good time. So we did that. We had a, an extended weekend. So we did the Rocks game on Friday. And that uh, had the fireworks at night. Oh, my God. 
they do it up. Friday Night Fireworks are great. It's not just like mm, half a song and then it's over. It was like a song and a half and then that huge grand finale and it was amazing. Uh, Liam went to a birthday party at Air Max and we had nothing really. Unsa- uh, Derek went golfing with a friend. A um, lot of organizing. Crazy nightmares last night. I had to do two double shots today because... I, you get it out like, of your head? No. Like it stuck with you? It, was, it wasn't It was just like one nightmare all night. It was like a bunch of nightmares. One, Liam was kidnapped. Another one, I was about to go out over a waterfall. <sighs> Another one, I don't know. Was somebody was trying to break into my house. It was one after the other. What the hell? Like, could it have been something I ate? We doing gummies? No. No. I don't do that stuff right now. <laughs> Last so, night? <laughs> yeah, it was just, uh, it was a weird thing, so hopefully I can get in a nap today. I have my IV drip today, so I'm excited about that. Shelby fun. We had our first moderately disappointing renter oh, at no. our Verbo. Like uh, they damaged stuff? Yeah. No! Uh, yeah, and, uh, and you file a claim, so like, I don't want to get into the weeds with this, but I force people to take out an insurance policy on damages they might do to our cabin, right? And okay. here was the disappointing part. Like, Trish and I roll up, and, and uh, she got out of the hospital Thursday, so that was like a blessing. So Friday, uh, we had the day off because you were at the wedding, and so uh, so we got my son to hockey, and then we headed out there. And when we rolled up right away, I'm like, there's crap everywhere. Like, they didn't pick up. Yeah. Like, they left some of our, like, house towels down on our dock, uh-huh. and then they had left inflatables out, and they had broken into, like, our storage bins. And there was like charcoal laid out and cigarette butts. And no, uh, did they smoke they, inside? No, they okay. didn't smoke inside. But then, like, they broke our bed, like one of the the trundle bed. They broke a piece off it, and like really? they didn't empty the garbage and stuff like that. Like it was, it was the first time that we had somebody rent from us that it was like it was disappointing. And I, I I'm like, I'm. I, Contrary to what you hear on the radio, I really am a pretty nice guy. And I struggled with leaving an honest review about this guy because, uh, I mean, they stayed there for a whole week, right? It was good money for us. And and I understand that some things happened, but here's here's how I would have handled that. As a dad, if my little kid would have broke a bed or yeah. something like that or broke a, a, a rail on a bed, I would have left a note. And maybe like 50 bucks yeah. or left a note and said, hey, I have a friend who can come out here and fix this or something like that. Or I'm sorry. But it was just they just like up and left and it was just crap everywhere. How many people stayed there? How many people? I was- think it was like a total of like six people, maybe seven people in the house yeah. or in the cabin. And so like it, it's not I get it. And this but I, the hard part was this is the first time we haven't had like amazing five star renters. Yeah. You know, that cleaned up Bummer. probably better than they got it there. And I was like, man, there was just crap everywhere. Stuff like under the couch, like wrappers and stuff. Like it just. Yeah. I get you have kids. But won't you do a once over before you left a place like that? I had a friend that joined us out at uh, the Dells and she has four kids and then she and her husband. And I was kind of appalled that like we were packing up and then we walked by their room and the way that they left their room. Some people just don't know the etiquette. And I'm like, girl. That it is so messy in there. I know you have kids, but everybody grab a portion of the well, area there that you're at. And then I'm kind of cleaning up around like the grill, and uh, there was a, a a plastic bag, like a garbage bag, that had baby diapers in there that had been sitting uh, out in the hot sun for days. Yuck! And I was like, dang. And so I was a little bit bummed out about that. And uh, and I. Like, my wife was never big about doing this renting thing to begin with. Yeah. And now I'm starting to feel like like what she was probably feeling ahead of time. Well, out of just one. Yeah. You've had many really great I know, but it, it, left, it left this just bad taste in my mouth. You know what I mean? So, I mean, of course, we filed the insurance claim and and they'll pick up uh, the insurance company that they I make them, you know, take out an insurance policy. They'll cover it, I'm sure. I guess that's the first time I've I've dealt with this. But I was yeah. just like, dang, it just left a weird taste in my mouth. Um, yeah, that would make me extremely upset. Did did you rate them? I did. Like you, you should probably yeah, be truthful I did. to and save I was, other renters. I was uh, truthful about it, but I was like, geez, you know, and I'm starting to think to myself, all right, you're there for a week. There's five, six, seven people. But I just think it was the like, they just up and left. And then we had to discover the crap and clean the crap up. You know what yeah. I mean? And I know you charge a cleaning fee, but I was like, this is beyond what we charge. So sometimes them. hamster humans need a little uh, dose of reality. Like you can't treat other people's property like that. I it give them a one. New one star. Today. They seem like they're pretty cool already. It's weird how you develop these uh, 
micro relationships with people that rent from you. Yeah. Very, very odd. The Playhouse podcast is made possible thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Catch the live show weekdays from 530 to 9 on 1047 KCLD. Now, share this with a friend.